Come on, come on. Netflix called me and said, man, we need Activate Church on Netflix right now. And I was like, all right, well, we got to get our act together. And um, I'm, I'm not lying, I'm prophesying. Sometimes there's a fine line. There's a fine line with us preachers. <laughs> How many people were there? I don't know, thousands. Someone sees a picture. All right, well, well okay, okay. And some angels and some... No, we, uh, we want to preach the gospel. We got to take uh, what God's doing here. And he calls us to build the church. Amen. He calls us to, to, to reach people and to love people. And we want to take this, uh, what God's doing here, and uh, package it together and, uh, so we can send. Did you know that we are called to evangelize and reach people for Jesus and not just take polls and kind of, hey, where are you at? Um, oh, you don't really look like a church person. Hey, no worries. We are called. I was talking to uh, my, my sons, and we were, we were discussing, hey, who are you inviting to church? And they're like, I don't think anybody wants to come. And I was like, okay, so that's not the point. Um, we're not gathering people to come to the YMCA. Um, I do think during COVID, we've lost a little bit of our, our evangelistic uh, emphasis. And so we're called to preach the gospel. The gospel is what? saves people, whether they know it or not. They might not be someone who wants to come to church, but they know not what they do, and so we must offer that and, and taste and see. And, and, and our, 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 our TV show is a little sample. It's a little Costco sample. Amen? How many of you, when that, when that nice little lady was like, hey, do you want some? And I was like, not really. And I was like, yes, I do. Thank you very much. That is the TV show. Amen? And so come on out if you want to be a part of that. Um, right after second service next week. And uh, after that, we will just move on. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We're on a series about the kingdom, and I've been preaching about the kingdom, and um, all of the preaching has been to these last couple messages and, and discussing the kingdom, the kingdom. You cannot preach the kingdom in its fullness. Uh, at least that's not been my, my, my emphasis or my job. My job is to highlight uh, within this series the idea that the kingdom is so powerful, it's mind-blowing. If, if you catch a, a glimpse of God's sovereignty sometimes, you're just like... Hold on, I made 15 bad decisions and then God met me at the end of those 15 bad decisions. You're just like, Poof, right? And then, and then, and then you just, you're just like, wow. And, and then yet there's this, like, where is God sometimes? How come, where's that power? Where's that sovereignty? Where's that? And, and there's this idea of kingdom that we have to relinquish. At, at the fall in the garden, we, we, we took back the kingdom in our own hands. And so if we don't teach this, we have to understand from, from the entirety of our life, every day we wake up, there's a battle with the flesh. We have to relinquish the throne of our heart to King Jesus. And he will not force you. And so we're learning this tension of relationship. Amen. And um, I want to speak this morning on the kingdom just for a few minutes and, and, and discuss just for the last time here, this, this story of David, 1 Samuel 17, David finds himself on the battlefield, and, and this is the story. You know the story in verse 26 of chapter 17. Then David spoke to the men who stood by him, saying, what shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine? David is, is trying to make a decision. He, he has counsel. He, he has the spirit of God. And David is trying to make a decision within the moment. I, I think we plan on making decisions, but we don't often make decisions as fast as we can make them. And, and so David is trying to gather information because he's about to make a life-altering decision. Do I go up against this cat or do I save my life? Is this, the, is this should, should, I'm anointed king. Should I put my life on the line for these Israelites who won't even fight for themselves and this king who's cowarding in the tent? Is this my moment? Is this my moment? Someone say, is this my moment? Sometimes you wonder, is this my moment? I tell my wife, what's up, you know, is, right? Is this just, okay. Is this the moment where I shut up and listen? Or is this the moment I, I blob a word salad of vulnerability and just pull a, hey, you want me to be honest with you? Is this my moment? Is this my moment to preach the gospel? Is this my moment I just listen to this person just talk about how God doesn't exist? Or do I go in for the kill shot and start to testify at Starbucks? Is this my moment, right? right? I mean, this is what we deal with if we're just to be honest. Is this your moment this morning? Is this my moment? There's oftentimes this walk of faith. We're like, is this, is this my moment of faith where God's going to meet me? God's going to heal me? God's going to restore me? Is this, is this, 
my moment. My, my, my little secret to you is Memorial Day weekend, our team usually just goes all out because, you know, so many people are gone and we just go, you know what, we, we got to come to church, so let's have some fun. And so we usually turn it up. So don't ever think that this is not your moment because it's Memorial Day weekend. This, this might be your moment. This might be your moment. And David's trying to decide if this is his moment. And he says, what shall be done for the Philistine? And the people answered him in this manner. What was the manner? They told him that, well, your, your, your family's not going to have to pay any taxes. They're going to be enriched. And you will marry the, 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 daughter, the king's daughter. And so you'll become royalty. That's a big, big. He's wanting to make sure. Hold on. Is this real? Is this legit? Is someone just throwing this out? That's a big, that, he, and he's negotiating. This, we're always negotiating in our own minds. Is this, is this, is this my moment? And, and the people answered him, yeah, this is what's going to happen for the person who kills um, Goliath. Now Eliab, oh, Eliab, the one who was rejected and not anointed. His oldest brother heard when he spoke to the men, and Eliab's anger was aroused against David. And he said, this is the battle before the battle. Why did you come down here? Why did you come down here? Did you know that not everyone's questions are sincere? That's why you got to be questioned. That's why you got to be careful. Why if you just don't, you don't need to answer everyone's questions. The enemy revealed this in the garden. He's like, so Adam and Eve, what, 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 what did God say? What, what did God say? He said you can't eat of all the trees. It's just, the enemy's not trying to ask a question. He's trying to ask a question to gain access through communication into the doorway of your soul soul so he can access a question when really the motive is to accuse. And so a lot of people ask you, so what? Oh, that's nice. You're going to activate church. They don't want to ask you a question about what church you go. They want to accuse you for being just a religious person who's going to be a hypocrite anyways. And so we got to be careful every once in a while we need to pull a Jesus and ask them a question to their question. Come on. Is anybody ready for me this morning? And this is what, this is actually what, what David does. Because Eliab didn't really ask, why did you come down here? No. And with whom have you left those few sheep burn? I know your pride. Oh, there it is. He's asking a question. Oh, why are you going back to school? The reason that friend is asking why you're going back to school is so they can tell you don't go back to school. You never finish what you start. I love you. I'm trying to help you. They're not trying to help you. Some of your greatest enemies to your calling are in an inner circle. And this is Eliab, his own brother. I know your pride. For you have come down to see the battle. A question starts out with an, ac- it ends with an accusation. There we go. Oh, in the garden, the enemy didn't want to ask a question. He wanted to tell them, did you know that God's withholding from you? And David said, and he asks a question. Remember, David is our type of Christ. He's our prophet pointing us to Jesus. What have I done now? Question mark. Your Bible has a question mark in it. What have I done now? There's such wisdom with people who are trying to accuse you of asking them a question. Why do you go to church? Why don't you? (laughs) You might avoid a lot of family fights this way. What have I done now? Is there not a cause, question mark? Is there, someone say cause. I want to look at this word this morning. Cause, cause, cause. Why are you down here? Why why do you do what you do? Why why did you cut your hair, Johnny? Why why did, I like it. Why, 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 why? Did you see an image? Did you? Why do you pray? Why don't you pray? Why do you go to church? Why do you eat cornflakes? Why do you eat Captain Crunch? Nature versus nurture. Why? I want to ask you why this morning. Can we get deep or shallow, however you look at it? But I want to quote the great poets, Chris Cross. They said, warm it up, Chris. I'm about to. Warm it up, Chris. I was born to do. Or that's what I was born to do. I totally killed it. Thank you, babe. I want to speak this morning from Chris Cross's statement. I was born to do. What what was I born to do? Are you doing what you were born to do? Why do you do what you do? I lost everybody. Chris Cross was a, was, anyways, the cause of the kingdom. What was I born to do? Why do I do what I do? What causes me to do what I do? Church oftentimes becomes one big TED talk, but don't misunderstand this for some, for some principles on pro principles, some tools on pro tools. This is an encounter, as you probably experienced during worship, that's at another level. This is above our pay grade. That's why we often just go, I don't know, do what you want to do. Woo! My heart burns because there's just something deeper taking place. 
and, and that's what we're after this morning. Amen? All right, you ready? Let's get you. All right, all right, all right, all right. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we just pray, take over this place. Give us your word. We are here. Like we, when we go to a restaurant, we're there for some human bread, some flesh bread, some real bread. We come to church because we need bread. All of us. All of us need some bread. We need some light. Your word is a lamp unto our feet. Lord, your word is what we need. David declared, he said, I don't just need weekly or monthly or yearly bread. I need bread on the daily. Give me today my daily bread. I pray you would heal and break all condemnation for those that don't feel worthy of coming to the table and coming to the place of communion. But it's a place of communion is the place of common union. Jesus wants you to have common union with him even though we're sinners. And so anything that keeps us from the presence of God or the word of God is from the enemy. He is the accuser of the brethren, but we declare in this place that there is therefore now, 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 not after you get your act together, but now, not when you feel it, but now there is no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. Lord, we thank you that if we're in you, Lord, we have access to the fullness of the Godhead. In Jesus' name, everybody said Amen. Amen. It's good to have Johnny back from Florida. <laughs> Feels warm in here. Feels warm in here. Whew. Thank you, Jesus. Welcome to the liquid sunshine, Johnny. Liquid sunshine everywhere. Like, that's why I moved. Anyways, so I grew up with family camp. Anybody have family camp? A couple of, Jaron, yeah, yeah, a couple of family campers. We'd all just go to camp. As a family, that's family camp. And uh, a little something for everybody. We often think about doing family camp. And then we don't. But anyways, um, family camp, I have good memories growing up in Shiloh Christian Fellowship in Oakland, California. And uh, we'd go off to the Redwoods near some Russian river, I think. And, and uh, the kids would have stuff. And then at night, the parents would have meetings. And that's when we were not invited to the meetings. Thank God. And uh, we would know. We would stay in our rooms and get babysat or something. And so one night, I was there with my brother and my cousin, I think. And, and my dad's like, all right, so don't, don't leave the room. No problem. Of course, no problem. Don't leave the room. Because dad knew that um, I like to climb trees, and I'm good at it. I don't know if you've ever seen me climb a tree, but I'm really, really good at it. And there was this one tree that had fallen over the, over the river, and you could literally go across the river. How cool is that? I don't know. I'm like seven years old. I don't even really remember too much. But I remember that, and I remember there was snapping turtles in the river. Now, I've never seen a Northern California snapping turtle, but they're not like this. They're huge. They will hurt you. And uh, I really felt God tell me that I needed to go see the snapping turtles. Amen. That's just, just trying to be an obedient servant of the Lord. And so me, my brother, my cousin, we left the house against my dad's orders because we knew better. Amen. All defiant people to authority said amen. Amen. I'm better than you. I don't know if you knew that. I know I know what is right more than you. Amen. All right. So anyways, um, we climbed over the tree and we came back. And just like I told, you know, I thought, I didn't tell my dad this, but I was thinking it. You know, of course it's going to be okay. And so I get home and dad finds out we went across the tree to see the snapping turtles. And he was not happy. Dad was not happy. Dad, dad said he was going to spank me. That's back when we used to spank our kids. And um, right on the, on the butt here. And... And he's like, you're going to spanking. And this is old school, though. They would torture you. They wouldn't spank you then. They'd say in the morning. So it's like you have to sweat it out in your cell. You know, you're in your room just like. You know one would do this now because it would be defined as abuse. But it wasn't. It was just good old-fashioned parenting because dad needed to uproot my, my desire to be right. Because the truth is some of you are 60 years old and you've never had this uprooted. And that's why you can drive on the street. You, you think it's hypocrisy. It, I don't think it is. It's when someone cuts you off, you literally think you're better than them. And what you're doing is right. That's why when you cut them off, it's okay because you're right. But they're wrong. And so if you never get this uprooted out of your heart, you'll always have a problem with authority. And you'll never like to be told what to do. Don't nudge your spouse or who you're next to. Please, okay. Don't do that. Don't get in trouble. This is a place of love and encouragement, hope and faith and eat, pray, love. But th this is one of those things where, where if you don't like to be told what to do, you, you might wrestle with this. Because you think you're a social justice warrior. But really you just want to kind of be right. Because I love this. Young people, when you get them to confess. 
profess, they will sort of, sort of, sort of show you their motive. It's like, why did you go over to the tree and see the snapping turtles? And it's like, once you get past the excuses, well, my, well Dave, it was David's fault, right? It, ah, it was their fault. Well, they made me do it. You'll really kind of get to this point, Dad, it's not a big deal. And it's really what I'm saying is, it, I can climb trees. You know my skills. I'm good. And I needed to see the turtle. Right? I love this because parents can say, well, listen, listen, listen. You know, I, I've been where you at. You have not been where I'm at. And that silence is a little, the little, you know, the little, little crumb snatchers right there. It's like. <laughs> because, because I know you think you're right, but that's not, the, that's not the point. The point is you need to obey. You need to obey your dad. I'm, I'm trying to teach you. This, isn't a, this is not a democracy. This is a theocracy, and I'm king of the, of the home. Too many of our fa- I turned this into a parent class. Too many of our families are like democracies. So what does everybody think? I don't care. I'm dad. I'm dad, and you don't go see the snapping turtles. But I have to. All of my friends, doesn't matter. So when you get down to the root of it, ultimately, it's I'm right, dad. And dad's like, you might be, but you're wrong because you're not obeying my voice. And that's why I love childlike humility and childlike faith. Because it's like, why did you do that? Because I thought I was right. I think that I'm right. Why did I go across that tree that night? I could have died. Why? Why do I do what I do? Well, why, why do I eat Captain Crunch? Why do I eat uh, Cinnamon Toast Crunch? Why? Why? Why uh, nature versus nurture? Is it in my family? Why do I pray? Why do I pray just to make it today? Uh, why? Why so much crisscross and MC Hammer this morning? This place is so good. Why? Why? Why do I come to church? Why did you come to church? Why did you come to church? Why do you read your Bible? Why don't you read your Bible? Why, why do you preach the gospel? Why don't you? What, what causes the decisions to be made that you make? And so, and so, and so Eliab asks David, why, why are you here? It's a, it's a poignant question because it reveals that something is driving your decisions. It isn't just that you make decisions. That's why eating healthy is so difficult for me because it's not that I don't want to be healthy. It's that by Wednesday afternoon, I have made 39 million decisions to say no to the tacos. And by Wednesday afternoon is taco time. Amen. I mean, I don't know what someone said, how many decisions you make every day. 35,000, 35,000 decisions get made every day. There is something, though, deeper underneath the decision that's driving you. And so what's driving Eliab is his own ambition. Because David lets us in on the secret. He says, is there not a cause? There is something causing me to make this decision. There's something deeper beneath me just deciding to matriculate and analyze a decision. There's a cause that's causing me to make make a decision. And that's why Eliab didn't have the kingdom cause. Eliab didn't have God's cause or else he would have gone up against Goliath. Eliab had a cause of self-preservation. Eliab had a cause of make sure the robe looks good and make sure I play the part. Eliab has a different cause. That's why people get weird. I'm not against saving the owl. It's just not my main cause on why I get up. I'm pro owl. For the record, I'm pro save the whales. I'm pro save the planet. I I do everything I can do. But it gets a little weird. I remember one time I mistakenly put the plastic bottle in the wrong can. I swear I saw this young person kind of tear up a little bit. and be like, you don't love Mother Earth? I'm like, I love Mother Earth. What? How, how did she become our mother? I love, I love the planet. It's not why I was born. And there's a different cult. But what happens is people get weird when something down here becomes their first love, their main driver. Their, and when image becomes your number one cause, you can sniff it a million miles away. Just go to L.A. And that's why beautiful people look ugly. It's not that they're ugly. It's that them is their cause. And it throws everything off a little bit. 
When your cause is misplaced, you come across angry and bitter and controlling. And so whatever is your cause, your words will reveal your cause. Why are you down here? See, that just revealed Eliab's cause is to control, is to put down David. He's, he's hurt that he got rejected. And so you see Eliab's cause. You'll hear people's cause. And money might be their cause. And, and, and something might be their cause. And there's nothing wrong with it. It just needs to be down here. And somehow it gets up here. And David says, is there not a cause? He reveals, his words reveal what's in his heart and there's something else from God that is causing him. He doesn't even pray. You notice he doesn't even pray on the battlefield. He didn't get there and say, oh, I need to come back. I need a 40 day fast. I need to go back. I need to figure out this situation. David in the moment is feeling like, whoa, something, whoa, I didn't see this come. I'm here to bring snacks. I'm here, but something is something that whoo, caused him, mm, is anybody here in the cause of Goliath? Because somebody needs to shut this cat up quick now. Somebody with a sword. I'm just a, I'm just a shepherd boy. Somebody take this guy out because there's always a cause of darkness. There's always a cause of your past. There's always a cause. And David stands up against, I'm preaching to somebody, David stands up against first the battle before the battle. See, there's always a battle before the battle. And that's typically a personal battle, a family battle. The battle that David had to get through in order to get to Goliath was the battle of Eliab, his family, his inner circle, the accusations of what start at home. Most people deal with what's going going on inside or what's going on at family. That's why you got to have grace on people when they cuss you out and they attack you because something is going on on the inside. And so your words reveal your cause. And so David was simply getting ready to kill Goliath. And so he keeps asking everybody, what, what's done for the man? What's done for the person that kills Goliath? Uh, you get the teen's daughter and you get the tax. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah, really? And David was like, ooh, I feel like, mm, okay, something is coming together. Ooh, and it takes him just a little bit of time, just an hour or two. Some of us are, yeah, well, I need two years, five years, ten years. All this management and Western mindset sometimes have gotten into your decision making. David's like, here it is, right here, right now. There's something causing me to, to, to make this decision that the time is, 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 is every once in a while, the time is, woo, right, 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 right now. The problem is I can't handle it. I'm not ready. So I don't preach. I don't teach. I don't love. I don't forgive. And is anybody here? me. I know I'm preaching fast here. I'm trying to get through this thing on Memorial Day weekend here and get you out of here. But David, David's words reveal his cause. Why? Because your words betray you or your words reveal your heart. How you really feel about God. How you really feel about church and his word. Why do you do what you do? Why do you go to church once a week, once a month when you feel like it? What, what, what makes, what causes, what, why, why, why? Why, why, why? And, and, and the, James, the brother of Jesus, also said your words will steer you towards something. So that's why you got to get your words right. Because not only do they reveal where you are, they will bring you into the tent of a king. Your words will bring you to the, to the next level. Your words will bring you into a place. Your words will bring you into that door. They'll hear. See, Saul had to hear the words of David, and they said, send for him. Your next season is going to send for you based on how you talk, based on how you carry yourself, based on the cause that's burning inside of you. There's something beyond cheeseburgers, even though I pray every day that in and out Burger comes and makes it to Kamaswal Shugel. Can I get an amen? Amen. That Shake Shack or whatever. Just bring, go, Lord, just bring them in Jesus' name. But there's something that is bigger than what gets me up in the morning than a cheeseburger or, or and I love snorkeling. I could snorkel. I can't, I just cannot, I just love snorkeling. And, and, but that's not why I was born. It's not why I was born. There's a cause. There's a cause causing me to do something. David reveals the key. He doesn't attack. He doesn't go on the offensive. He just says, you don't want to know why I do what I do? Be cause. Be cause. Why did I go over the tree to see the snapping turtles? Because I felt like my opinion was right. When you get down to the base, it's why we go to counseling. It's why we're in prayer. It's why we come to church. It's why we talk. It's we're often wondering, what is driving me? For a lot of people, and most people admit that something's driving them. That's why they say Mother Earth or the universe or karma 
Or, oh, you're a Gemini. Ooh, great. Okay, so I do what I do because I was born in the month of June and the stars. Ooh, okay, that's fun theology. Okay, so hold on. Why do I do what I do? We're all in search of understanding because we know. We know that there's something deeper in us operating. Paul said it. Paul said, I do what I don't want to do, and I don't do what I want to do, and there's, a, there's sin warring, and there's something operating within me to do the will of God, but to also not do the will of God, and if we're just honest about it, not that we are victims, but right up to the line, David wanted us to know, you know what, you know what's causing me to do this, is he does not point to himself. He says, is there not a cause? He didn't, he didn't point to himself and say, I'm an awesome warrior. He did testify in the tent of the king, but he ultimately pointed to something bigger than I am that I'm a part of and it's a part of me. And it's literally almost operating and moving and causing and making me do some things that I wouldn't naturally do. Don't look to me. This is something bigger that might be from God operating in me that's causing me to pray and to forgive and to preach and to love and to go to church. There's something in me. Is there is a cause that is causing me? Don't look to me. I don't come to church because I'm a do-gooder. There's something outside of me that's literally moving me to wake up every Sunday and go, I gotta get to the house of God. I've got to get into the house of God and then barbecue. I have, there's something in me that says, Can I vacation? Can I vacation? Yeah, can I pray? A non Do I need to pray on vacation? Do I? Yeah, but I don't know. The snorkeling's good, and the, and the drink was in, and cheeseburger was good, and the, and the and the sand was good, and the way were good. I'll stop talking about Maui because some of us are like, whoa, that, that sounds really good. But there's something that, that will not, that will, and it's like, I don't mean to be super spiritual, guys. I know we're in Maui. It's like day one. I got, I'm going to go read my Bible a little bit. Why? Why? I, see, when you get down to the fundamental driving force, there's a cause of a kingdom that is literally saying, I, I really kind of want to. <laughs> And it, it sounds like, whoa, that's like an alien inside of you causing you to do stuff. And then David's like, kind of, sort of, yeah. God said, I found, a, I found a boy with a heart that I could sit on. And when he comes and sits as king, he begins to rule and reign. And you start to sense the power of his kingdom like, man, why do you say sorry so much? Why, why did you go up? Well, why do you go up and say you're sorry to your wife when you feel like she's wrong? Because it doesn't matter anymore. I, I have to, I just, I kind of sort of, so many times, man, the Spirit of God comes on me. I just like, and I had, I had I thought about so many speeches that I was going to give her. And I'm like, no, I'm going to wait you out. You're going to feel the pain of this one, sister. I'm going to, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to month. I'm going to go Cold War. You know me that like Cold War plans I was making? And then like three minutes into prayer, I'm like, I just want to say I'm sorry. <laughs> what were you trying to say? <laughs> and I'm, that's the only way. I literally, good luck being married in your flesh because I'm right. Snapping turtles need to be seen. Speeches need to be made. People need to reap and sow. <laughs> and here you are, you become part of the kingdom. And people don't understand it. Because, like, why do you do what you do? It's like, honestly, I can't even take credit for sharing my testimony. At that Starbucks, I, I felt caused. I felt caused. Can I tell you a dirty little secret? Literally, at 14 years old, the king sat on my heart and ruined an imperfect, lustful, weird, selfish kid from California and just kind of kind of made me do some things. If I'm going to be dead honest, there's, there's, I think the biggest thing that people are looking for, when did God speak to you about the church? I don't know if he ever did. He just kind of caused me to... What, I just kind of felt... Why did you... Why, what, the cause, is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? I, 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 I've been waiting to preach this for so many years because I felt the groundswell to, to tell people. And obviously a lot of our church is not here and they're going to listen to it this week. And so I still think it's a prophetic moment whenever you hear this is that God's going to start to cause some things to happen in your life. And it's going to be the cause 
that, that God, that how did you overcome pornography? How did you forgive that person? It's going to be like, honestly, I gave God my heart and there's, he, he kind of caused it to happen. Less of me and more of him. David's pointing that. And remember, David is pointing us to Jesus. He's representing Jesus. He, he, he caused me. He, he caused me. And so Jesus, a thousand years later, David was a thousand years before Christ. And so a thousand years later, Jesus comes. He's 30 years old and he comes and he says, repent for the kingdom, for the kingdom, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent does not mean to feel it. You might feel it. Oftentimes emotion is the fruit of repentance. Repentance in the Bible is a, is a Greek word called metanoia. We preached on it. It means to change the way that you think. Change the way that you think. Change the way that you look at this whole thing. John the Baptist preached it and Jesus preached it. He said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And then he starts his ministry. He goes to the shores of Galilee and he finds Peter and he says, he says follow me and I will make you a fisher of men. He says, follow, follow, follow. We're talking about passions and what causes me and my desires and my, my wantings. And, and Jesus helps us out. He says, let me help you out. Take all of that. And see, follow is a, is a, is a, is a receiving word that's in motion. It's not passive. It's, it's in motion. It's follow. It's receive. Follow, 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 follow. Take all of your passions and direct them towards me. This morning, immediately, as much as you can, just begin to take, I know, I know there's some things you want, but that cannot be your number one cause. And if you want a recalibration of the causes in your life, you've got to start with follow. Okay, I take them and I put them towards not religion, not just a TED talk, not just some good ideas. I'm going to follow Jesus, he says, follow me. I want you to take everything that you have, every desire. I know you want to be married. I know you want to have kids. I know you want that business to flourish. I know you want strategy. I know you want that. But number one, my first love is, 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 is Jesus. And if you can do that, Jesus says, that's all I want you to do. That's why when we preach, you need to understand that most of what we preach is in that category. G not make you a fisher of men. We get confused because you think it's follow Jesus and become a fisher of men. Jesus didn't say that. He said, follow me and I will make it happen. I will make you a fisher of men. I will save you. I will heal you. I will give you confidence. I will give you the faith. I'll give you my plan. All I ask you to do is whatever you do and whatever plans you make are in the category of follow. So yeah, pray and yeah, church and yeah, small group and yeah, book it and yeah, seminar. But all of it is to follow after me. And Jesus said, I will make you a fisher of men. Yeah, I might use a pastor and yeah, I might use my word and yeah, I might use my spirit. Yeah, but I will do it. I will make it happen in your life. I will cause you, it's the same word, I will make you, I will cause you to become a fisher of men. So when you become a fisher of men and people say, what happened? You say, he caused it. He caused it to happen. He made, why are you a fisherman? I, Peter, I thought you were fishing for fish. Why are you out here preaching and healing people? He says, I, I just followed him and he made me a fisherman. He made me bold. He washed me. He cleansed me. He empowered me. He anointed me. Some will say amen. He did it. He did it. He did it. He made me a fisher of men. Follow me and I'll make you a fisher of men. Well, why, 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 why haven't I realized that yet? Why, why, why haven't I seen that, that power? Because you might be holding on to your net. And this is the crossroads of this series. As the tides are changing on the Sea of Galilee for my kingdom and his kingdom, we see the law, this tide. It's not a, it's a tide. It's, hold on, did you come to abolish the law? No, 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 I came to fulfill the law. But what the law could not do, in other words, what you were trying to do, you cannot do. I will now fulfill everything that you want, but I will do it. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's what we're looking for. But we come up short because we're like, where's that strength? Where's that power? Where's that cause? Because we feel it with sin, don't we? Why'd you do that? I don't know. Like a demon came over me and I, poof, I don't know. I was like, 
why did you do, why did you do that? Why do you harbor that? A lot of times, like, I don't mean to sound like I'm trying to make excuses. I just, and we package it up. We put lipstick. We're all of us like junior psychologists because the internet now. Well, I'm just projecting and I'm just working through my inner child. I'm just like, just speak plainly, please. You're like, I don't know. I can't forgive them because they're evil. Just say it. <laughs> because they rejected me. Just say it. Why aren't you, why aren't you? fighting restoration in your family because they don't want it say it <laughs> be honest I don't know why it's not working I love them they're not loving me back I don't know but you'll there's something is at work in me and there's something at work in them and and Jesus said follow me let me be your number one passion, your first love, and I will, I will make it happen. I'll make it happen in your heart. I'll come in. And you just look to me. You just, that, that, you, just, you, just, you, just, you just look to me, and I will make it happen. I don't see it, Jesus, because you're holding on to your net. And sometimes nets are not bad things. It's just 20 years of your life. It's 50 years of your theology and your mindset and your perspective. Sometimes your net is beautiful. You have mended it and mended it and mended it. And so Jesus comes on your life. See, Jesus will always find you. That's why we got to do Activate TV, because this generation is on their phone. We can tell them all day long, why don't you gather? You know what? I don't know, man. It's not 1980, and people don't need to come to church. They can find it at their home. That's fine. I want them to come, but we need to bridge them. We need to find them where they're at. Jesus will always find you in your Galilee. He will. This generation's on their screens. As much as I hate screens, we're going to attack the screens and we're going to get them out of their basement and get them out of their room and get them into the house of God for community, for presence, because there's nothing that replaces what all of us want, which is connection and human relationship and, and community. I know we're busy and I know things are stretched out and life is fast paced, and but we, nonetheless, our... our our, our, our job, our mission is to preach the gospel and to build the church and to gather, to gather the ecclesia, the called out ones, and saying, God, is that, are those people part of our family? We want to gather them so we can, we can impact this entire region. And the Bible says that David served his generation and then died. That's all I want is I want to be able to be said that I was faithful with Jesus and I served my generation. I preached and I loved and I forgave and I laid down my life for my, for my generation. And I've got to let go of any that when Jesus says follow me the only thing that, that keeps me from following him with the fullness of my heart is whatever I'm holding on to and so this morning you got to let go and you got to say Lord here I am you got to let go of the past and let go of expectations and let go of the hurt and let go of some things and say Lord here I am I want to follow you I want to follow you I want to I want to I want I just want you you make me what you want to make me you cause me you cause you cause you cause Jesus starts his ministry I will make you a fisher of men and the climactic conclusion to this moment that Jesus stands before Pilate before the crucifixion on the battlefield of salvation I want you to hear this. I want you to hear David say it a thousand years before, prophetically as a question, is there not a cause? He didn't fully understand. He was a messianic prophet. He didn't fully understand the coming Messiah, but he was prophesied about it. <sighs> he set it up. That's what we do for people. We set people up to receive Jesus. We don't condemn them. We're not, we're not against them. I'm with you. That, that's, why, that's why I'm looking for bridges and I'm looking for connections because I understand that you don't believe in God. I understand you've been hurt by the church. I understand that I don't justify it and I don't make excuses about it, but I also don't side with you, but I do, I am, I, I'm, I love you and I want to listen and I'm here and, and I want to understand because there's, but why would you do that? This area has rejected Jesus. No, there's a cause of Jesus Christ and there's the cause of the church and there's the cause for people searching for truth and they need the love of God and they need the church and they need prayer and they need healing and their family needs hope and, and, their, and their mind and their heart and their soul needs the presence of God and so Jesus stands before Pilate I love this 
John chapter 18, verse 36. Then, oh, this we're going we're to jump it back. That's right. Then Pilate entered the praetorium again and called Jesus. And he said to him, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered and said, are you speaking for yourself about this? Or did others tell you? I love this. Just, just questions. Just questions. Pilate answered, am I a Jew? Just imagine this moment. This is, at the, this is at the crossroads of the law being fulfilled. Rome being the context. Maybe the greatest empire ever. And the, and the, and the, and the pressure and the tension. Just like David, between the tension of the pasture and the palace, it was the decision that David made that, that took him from the pasture into the palace. And so now Jesus is at the crossroads in the battlefield of salvation. He stands before the law and the Pharisees, and he stands before sinners, and he stands before Pilate. And he says, am I a Jew? Your own nation and chief priests have delivered you to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight so that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. Pilate therefore said to him, are you a king? And Jesus answered, you say rightly that I am a king for this cause. There's our word. For this cause I was born and for this cause I have come into the world that I should bear witness to the truth for this cause. David asked it, is there not a cause? There seems to be something of the kingdom that I'm being caught up into and that's caught up in me, that's helping me and driving me and motivating me. It's not me, it's of the kingdom. And then Jesus stands before Pilate and he says, I don't stand here just of my own admission of my own will and my own desire. It's not my will, but it's, a, it's my Father's will. And I stand here and I take the cross because this is is why I was born. No one under, don't, don't misunderstand this. I was born to die for humanity, to take their place, to die for you and as you, and then three days later to come up out of the grave. It's not a good idea. It's not just a, it's the cause of my Father in heaven. For this cause, for this cause, I was born. For this cause. Why was I born? Why was I born? Why was I born? You weren't born for just a career. You weren't born just for some face. There's a reason you were born. There's a cause that you were born. There's a reason you were born. Share, start singing this song, My First Love. I want God to speak to you right now. Just stand to your feet. But God's going to show you why you were born. I know you need the car. I know you need the house. I know. I know. God says. But there's a reason you were born. There's a reason you were born. There's a reason you were born. There's a first, there's a cause. There's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a cause. And this, this cause is the only thing that can literally cause you to discover why you were born and cause you to to find Jesus and to cause you to live for Him. Go ahead. Just, yeah. Here we go. Just she sings. Just an and a that first love. There's some things that have replaced it. Love is found here in our sacred space. And Jesus says, I want to take first place again. We'll cause some things to happen. Will cause some things to happen. Why was I born? You're still my you say this. Only some purpose why you were born. You're still my first this is the reason you were born. I'm gonna put my hand on you. You're still my only it's not just to make money. It's not just to do that. There's a cause. There's a cause. There's a cause. There's a cause. There's a kingdom cause that you're a part of. And Jesus said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cause you to see that this morning. Just for you. Take it. Follow me. Break the bread and I'll make you a fisher of men. I'll make it happen. Follow me. Perfect. Right now, across this room, follow him. Nothing in between. 
Let's take this moment and follow him. Here I am, Lord. I want to know why I was born. Why I was born. You're still my first love. Why was I born? You're still You've been searching for purpose. You've been searching for fulfillment. Only the cause can do that. You're still my only the kingdom can do that. Love. Only why you were born can do that. Jesus is saying there's something bigger. There's something bigger. There's something bigger. There's something bigger. There's something bigger that I'm about to put in your heart. It's beyond what you can do. It's of the heavenly realm. It's of my kingdom. Open up your heart. Open up your heart. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Let go of your net. Let go of your net. Let go and let me put the very reason you were born in your heart. It's, it's the cause. There's a cause. There's a purpose. There's a fulfillment. There's a reason I breathed you into existence. There's a reason I crafted you in your mother's womb. There's a reason I saved you. There's a reason I put a gift in you. There's a reason I planned out your life. There's a cause. There's a cause. There's a reason. There's a purpose. Jesus says, take it. I'll make it happen. I'll make it happen. Right now. Right now. I'll make it happen. I'll show you. I'll put my hand on you. For this cause was I born. I was born for this. You're about to say I was born for this. I was born to worship. I was born to do this. I was born to preach. I was born to sing. I was born to lead. I was born, I was born for this, I was born for this, God's about to show you why you were born. some things to happen. You're about to wake up in the morning with a fresh wind at your sails. There's going to be fresh purpose. You're not going to deal or struggle with what you used to struggle because he's saying, ah, I'm your first love. There's a greater cause. There's a greater cause. There's a greater cause. And it's going to begin to cause you to do some things. It's going to begin to cause you to pray. And when people ask you, why are you doing what you're doing? You're saying there's a cause. I was born for this cause. I was born for the church. I was born for my family. I was born to pray. I was born to do this business. I was born to build this. I was born to disciple. I was born for the word. I was born to do what I'm doing. It's the cause that's causing me. I'm, I, I, I'm, I was created to worship. Why are you worshiping? Because I was created to worship. I'm a worshiper. He's worthy. He's worthy. I have to worship. I have to worship. I have to worship on Saturday. I have to worship on Sunday. I got to worship on Monday. I got to worship on Christmas. I got to worship on vacation. My heart burns. I can't help it. I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost is in this place. For anybody that says, Lord, here I am. I want to follow. I want to follow. I want to follow. I want to follow. I follow after you. He's telling you, I'm about to make you. I'm about to cause you. I'm about to make you. I'm about to cause you. I'm about to move in your life like never before. I'm about to move supernaturally. I was born for this. I was born for this. 
I was born for this. Keep singing. Let's finish this. My heart burns. Team, fill this place. One last. Come on, one more minute. My heart burns for this. My heart burns for this. My heart burns for this. Let the cause. Let the cause. Let the cause. I was born for this. Let the let the Holy Spirit consume you. Holy Spirit consume you. I was born for this. 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 I'm a, I was born for this. This is why I was born. Hey. Oh, it burns for you. Jesus, it burns for you. Sing it to Jesus. Sing it to Jesus. Sing it to Him. Sing it to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Sing it. Sing it to the one who saved you. Sing it to the one who heals you. Sing it to the one that renews you. Sing it to the one who loves you. Sing it to the one. My heart burns. Every eye closed. close this morning Jesus we thank you for our careers we thank you for provision we thank you for all the miracles that have sustained us and Jesus whether we're what feels like a moment before Pilate or a moment before an Eliab, or a moment before a Goliath. We know this morning that we can stand only because of the cause. No other motivation will allow us to fulfill. So many of us feel the pressure. We gotta get out of here, but just a quick little, quick little altar just moment right now. Just take this if this is you. You feel the weight. And some of it's good and some of it's bad. Not all, the net wasn't necessarily bad. You gotta go, I just want, just, just, just understand this. You want less weight, I want more cause. Because the thing that I'm calling you to is a big deal. Goliath is a big deal. Standing before Pilate, crucifixion is a big deal. But on the other side of that pressure and that weight is victory. David, you're gonna take out Goliath, you're gonna, you're going you're gonna to deal with your family in a, in a healthier way. And tonight you're going to fall asleep in the palace. And Jesus went to the cross and endured. He hung on that cross from 9 a.m. to 3 in the afternoon. <laughs> Six hours of agony after all they did to him. He was able to endure it because he said, for this cause, I was born. When God puts that in you, this cause is going to be more powerful than any other outward pressure or any other inward thing that you're fighting. He's saying it's the cause that will cause you to come through. It's the cause that will cause you to heal the family, build the business, buy the house know where to go and know what to do. When I put my cause in you, he said, if you follow me, I'll, I'll make you. I'll cause you to become. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We love you so much. Thanks for coming to church. If you want some prayer, come on up here. If not, have an incredible day, but let the, let the king just come and sit on your heart and just watch him move like he never has in your life before. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Love you, church. If you want some prayer, come on up here. We'd love to pray with you. Have an incredible day.